What's up, Wizards? Welcome to, to another episode of Where's Walsh? In all seriousness, it's good to be back in front of a camera and bringing another product review to you guys today. Today we'll be taking a look at the Ballistic Engineering Core Trigger. We've talked about for a bit. Now, Walsh and I have had a lot of time behind this trigger, but can it surpass my current top budget trigger with the Rise Armament RA140? Well, let's find out. Now, before we take a look at this trigger and kind of see it in action, let's learn a little bit about the company in general. Ballistic Engineering was born in 2023 based around what the company saw as a want and a need in the firearms industry. And I like that they didn't just repackage old ideas in a new case. They really designed and built this trigger from the ground up. Having a background in military product development and the firearms world, they knew they could produce a better product at a better price point with better customer service. Now, looking at their website, they're not trying to sell you some overpriced mug or a gunsmithing apron you'll never use. Just two triggers that you can buy. Seems like a trigger company has their priorities straight. But that's a little short jaunt into ballistic engineering as a company. Let's get on the bench and take a look at this trigger. The core trigger is a high quality, single stage AR platform trigger that offers precision and reliability for your rifle. This trigger is designed with a pull weight set at four pounds. One of its standout features is a very short break and reset, which helps ensure crisp and rapid follow-up shots. Now, as mentioned, Walsh and I had a lot of time behind this trigger at the Jawless Hog Night Vision Operator course that we attended. With no time to break it in, we had very few problems with this trigger over the hundreds of rounds we shot. Even with some forced failures, once we were able to clear the jam, the trigger still functioned great. Now, I will, caveat that and say there were a couple hiccups that we had with Palmetto State Armory AAC ammo, but that's kind of been known to have some issues as well. So not really blaming the trigger for that, but just highlighting some issues that we had. Back to the trigger, this trigger incorporates Ballistic Engineering's patented disconnect system, which enhances its reliability. It's equipped with a full mass hammer combined with a robust hammer spring to ensure consistent and reliable ignition Internally, the trigger uses A2 and S7 tool steel, stainless steel bushings, and it's housed in a black anodized 6061 aluminum casing. For installation, the trigger unit is a drop-in system that uses set screws to secure the trigger and hammer pins, ensuring a precise fit in your lower receiver. This design doesn't require anti-walk pins, which simplifies the installation process. Now, on one of my builds, I did use anti-walk pins. And honestly, the reason for that is I have dozens of them, so it's kind of a why not thing, but I agree that they're probably not needed for this installation. Now, during that night vision operator course that I mentioned previously, I did have mil-spec hammer and trigger pins in this thing. Never had a single problem, but we did make sure that we installed it per the manufacturer's specifications. So, as long as you install it correctly, shouldn't have any issues yourself. All right, next, I wanna take a look at how this trigger fits in various platforms. Now, some of the drop-in triggers that I have purchased in the past have had some difficulty fitting in some of the lowers that I have if they're not mil-spec forged lowers. And so, for the first one, let's see how it fits in a standard mil-spec forged lower. As you can see, the off-the-shelf mil-spec lower receiver has no problem with this trigger fitting inside of it. And yes, I'm not fully installing it because I'm gonna show off like four different platforms for you guys. So just cut me some slack. You can see how your mil-spec hammer and trigger pins fit loosely through this drop-in. And that's where those set screws come into play. Getting the right size Allen wrench, you just gotta get it into those set screws and you basically tighten the trigger against the trigger and hammer pins. And as mentioned, I didn't have any problems doing it this way when I ran it for my night vision operator course. All right, standard mil-spec lower is good to go, but what about the Aero M4E1 that our team loves so much? Walsh has talked about some issues that he's had with drop-in triggers in this lower, so let's see what happens. As with the mil-spec lower, I have no issues getting this to fit in the M4E1 lower. And like I said, and as viewers of the channel know, the M4E1 lower is pretty much our favorite lower for the team. But what about those lowers that don't really have any type of mil-spec that they follow? Here's an Aero M5 or their AR-10 lower, and as with everything else, it fits no problem. All right, finally, let's see how this fits in an AR-9 platform. 
Here is an Aero EPC, which takes Glock magazines. And as with everything else, the ballistic engineering core trigger fits just fine in this lower. So regardless of what you may have at home, you should have no problems getting this trigger to fit inside the lower of your choice. Now I can practically hear the naysayers out there. And yes, I did try these in almost all Aero products, but guess what? I don't care what those naysayers say. All right, so it'll fit in just about anything, but how does it compare with other drop-in triggers or your standard mil-spec triggers? Now, I've been pretty open about my like of mil-spec triggers. I've talked about it both on our Everyman's Arsenal podcast and our, on our Thursday night live chats, especially with some reduced power springs from someone like JP or Cavelli. And really my justification behind that is repairability in the field. That being said, I've had my fair share of drop-in and aftermarket triggers over the years. Now, here's where I stand. The Rise Armament RA535 is probably my favorite trigger right now. But can this ballistic engineering core trigger at half the price come even close to comparing with that Rise Armament 535? Spoiler alert, absolutely yes. Now, this has a slightly heavier pull at four pounds compared to the 535's three and a half pounds. And honestly, I, I doubt you're ever gonna notice the difference between those two. But with this ballistic engineering core trigger, the take up, the break, the reset feel remarkably similar to triggers that are double the cost. Now, I want to make sure I emphasize that this is obviously my opinion and from my perspective, but I highly doubt that 90 plus percent of the people that would shoot these two triggers would feel that much of a difference. But would buying a cheaper trigger skimp out on the durability side? Heck no. As mentioned with the S7 and A2 tool steel for various components, the steel bushings and a hard anodized aluminum chassis to hold it all, these triggers are going to last and last. And what if you do have a problem with it? Well, they have a lifetime warranty. And it will cover pretty much any problem that you'll ever face with this trigger. Add in the fact that the lifetime warranty is completely transferable, and you have a solid option in the budget tier of aftermarket trigger options. So with all of that being said, let's get into my pros and cons for this trigger and kind of see what my overall feelings are. Now, my first pro has got to be its absolute affordability. Sure, this thing has an MSRP equal to a family outing at McDonald's. <laughs> Thanks a lot, inflation. <laughs> Did I mention that we have a discount code for these guys? <laughs> Try TLDCO to save even more money when buying one of these triggers. My next pro, the operation of this trigger. With a feel that compares with my Rise 535 trigger, this is easily going to be my favorite trigger to put in my builds, especially with its low cost. The crisp, short break, and reset really allows for quick, successive shots to be made. Also, I'm usually a two-stage guy for my long-range stuff, like in my AR-10, but I'm really curious what this trigger is going to do in that AR-10 in the future. Maybe a follow-up video showing that. My next pro is kind of twofold, and that's the durability and the lifetime warranty. Seeing the steel and aluminum they used to make these triggers led me to have zero concerns about their long-term durability. Add in the fact that they seem to have a no-question lifetime warranty, it leads me to believing even more about their reliability and durability. All right, cons, and I really only have one. And I want to caveat that this is based from certain perspectives, not necessarily my perspective. The cost. While the Ballistic Engineering Core Trigger is an excellent investment for serious shooters looking to enhance their AR's performance, its price point might be considered steep compared to basic aftermarket triggers. Now, for those on a tight budget or those just getting their feet wet in aftermarket trigger options, the price point on this might be a deterrent. Now, I think it's important to weigh the cost against the potential benefits of durability and reliability, Especially when you're engaging in events or engaging in shooting where those things and those capabilities might not be that important to you right now. Personally, when I started thinking about trigger upgrades, I would just go with some new springs from JP or Cavelli. But I also believe in a buy once, cry once, so yeah, mixed bag there, I guess. But that's it. So overall final thoughts. The core trigger offers superior performance, reliability, and ease of installation. And don't forget that lifetime warranty. With a trigger that outperforms others at double the price, the Ballistic Engineering Core Trigger is a must-have trigger upgrade in my book. But I want to say thanks to our Patreons and our YouTube members. Truly appreciate your continued support. 
And thanks to everyone that likes, comments, and subscribes. Comment down below, let me know what you think of the ballistic engineering core trigger, and if it's something that you put in your AR. All right, guys, I'm out of here. Looks like the lip. Try spitting on it. First thing. Oh, I well, I told him to try rubbing it first. Yeah. Didn't yeah. help. You